A strong economy is the source of national strength as it is the start and end of everything. Now, there cannot be a successful education reform or any other reform if the economy is weak. Over the dependence, over dependence on uh, crude oil as a major foreign exchange earner, importation coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic brought the Nigerian economy to this precarious situation. Now today, the rate of inflation in Nigeria has shot up with its attendant consequences on goods and services while many Nigerians groan under the rising cost of living. Taming the nation's rising inflation is our concern and uh, we have in the studio Yushao Aliu, uh, an economic analyst, uh, to talk about this as well as uh, Dr. Jamil Mohamed Lahiru, an economist as well, uh, to discuss this. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Good morning. All right. Well. Uh, the last figure released by the NBS as far as Nigeria's inflation indicate a drop uh, uh, from, you know, 22.79% uh, to 22.41%. And, you know, some have argued that this is not a true reflection of, you know, the Nigerian economy as it is now as regards uh, inflation. What do you make of that, Doctor? Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, uh, I would agree with that uh, position. Um, uh, you see, there's, there's, uh, there are a lot of differences between inflation and distortions. I think we've, over the years we've not been able to differentiate between what our inflation is and what uh, our distortions are. The present government has come with uh, some uh, proposals about certain reforms. Uh, for instance, the tax reforms. Uh, this, uh, these are part of the distortions in the system. You see, when the president came, uh, he made a kind of, uh, would I say, was it, it was not a policy statement. He, uh, he said it himself, the fuel subsidy removal issue. It was not supposed to be a policy statement, but you could see the reaction. That particular one is a massive distortion in the system because it was not meant to be. And if you try to figure out that particular thing in figures, you cannot get it. You see, uh, the NBS, if you follow, you see the, the, the figures, our, uh, our figures, our data is so much distorted. The figures you get from the NBS is different. You get figures from NNPC different. You get all very, very different figures. Mm -hmm. So where do we harmonize this and say this is exactly where our economy mm -hmm. is? Well, I mean, we, we cannot use the figures of, from the last uh, inflation rate released by NBS to kind of analyze Tinubu's decision on the fuel subsidy, for instance, and the FX rate, can we? I mean, uh, perhaps we should be looking at the distortions caused by the uh, cash uh, cash withdrawal policy uh, before he came exactly. into being. Perhaps is what uh, it, it is the same thing I'm saying. The distortions are there, and the distortion seems to be more massive than the actual inflation, that the actual figures of our economy, uh, the, our our GDP, our. Uh, inflation. You see, look at even the way the government framed it. The government said, okay, we are going to reduce in, uh, inflation from, say, it was 23 percent, from 23 to 13 percent. They didn't give a time frame. Within which period are you going to reduce this? Then at the same time, they said they were going to cut the interest rates from 18.5 percent to 9 percent. That is massive. I don't know if that will be by fiat because you cannot reduce uh, 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 your interest rates from 18 point once you reduce interest rates definitely by our conventional economy we know that inflation will rise all right so how are you going to manage that all right um one point is clear we have rising inflation 
whether uh, the current figure is uh, a bit lower than what it really is, we do have a, uh, rising inflation. inflation. So my question is to you, for the uh, seventh consecutive time, the, each time the MPC had a meeting, they increased the interest rate. As a matter of fact, at some point, it appeared as if the interest rate was chasing the inflation rate because each time the inflation rate comes up and it's high, the MPC meets and then, as a matter of fact, they're meeting right now. We do not know what they're going to say today. But it appears as if this policy, this uh, increment in the interest rate hasn't done anything for our inflation rate. Why is that so? It cannot be so. Uh, you see, conventional economics always try to speak under certain conditions, conditions that must be held at a particular period. Uh, the interest rate that is attached to an economy, there is always a focus, there is always a target, but unfortunately the central bank in the monetary policy rate always insists using orthodox uh, 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 guidelines. But unfortunately, some of the things that are causing inflation are not conventional. And if they are not conventional, you cannot use conventional tools to, to check on conventional means. That is the situation on ground. For seven times, I have been on the forefront in disagreeing with the central bank that you cannot just be putting the MPR on a high side thinking that you can control money supply. This money supply is categorized M1, M2, M3. All has its own indicators and it also has its own behavior. One basic thing that I call the attention of the bank at that time is that if you are raising the NPR, it is assumed that you know the liquidity within the banking sector and at the same time the liquidity outside the banking sector. It was come to a conclusion by the same bank that they have discovered that money is not yet within the banking sector. And then why are you raising interest NPR to control what is not with you? And that brought cashless policy. And that same cashless policy was a wrong timing. And this, the effect of that cashless, now we have unconventional cashless situation where you use the same inflation to take away excess money with every individual because the purchasing power of individuals is being eroded by policies. There's something that uh, 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 postulated by Dr. Distortion of policies. Anytime you are into policy, I have said it time with that Domba, the simple way to understand an economy is to look at human system. Mm. Human system is the best experiment to understand because before monetize, monetize economy, no, no individual is aware that what is inflation and economy because it was a trade by barter situation. People are wanderers. People are consuming without a fixed price. But in a situation when it is monetized, now people have to be under human-induced policies, like, for instance, the money supply, mm. determining so, so would you say then, in this context, that we are experiencing policy somersault? No, between, not somersault. Between this, no, no, uh, trans no. within this transitional period? Maybe. Yes, there is some policy somersault, but distortion of policies. Let me give you right. It is, uh, I have said it the first day, on 13th June, sorry, on 29th May, that we are not expecting a president to come and announce withdrawal of subsidy when there is no government information. There is no SGF, there is no this, even if there are stakeholders, you have not even gone through what is being submitted to you. And then suddenly you come out and then explain to Nigeria there is no more subsidy. You are supposed to see, to understand, there is transition in everything. And there is policy. And there are also certain decisions that are cogent in an economy. That created a lot of panic. If not that labor was very uh, uh, cooperative, there it can bring a, a, a very serious issue to our mm. democracy because but, let me let me just mm. uh, the same issue on that of course we are proponent of subsidy has to go because of its own distortion of a lot of political economic issues in the economy but then the unification of accentuate cannot come at that period at the, the same period you are not producing you are aware that you are not refining this product you are aware 
that you are going to import that same product. You are aware that it is no longer government that will import. You are aware that exporters that you are going to probably formed, they are the ones to bring this product. You know that even using all economic trend that there is going to be change in price because the short term effect of unification is that it is good to eliminate black market but it is also good to consider factors that will stabilize the economy and when you fail to stabilize the economy whatever policy you are coming whatever economic decision you are bringing in you are going to face a lot of difficulty and that is why today at 830 at the parallel market no investor can import and sell at the control price of that 527 per pms liter so these are some of the distortions that we must check let, let me tell you what how nature works if you want to plant cassava there is a season for it if you want to plant corn there is a season for it if you want to plant banana there is a season for it so also in all economic policies you check the economic environment first and you see how your policy is working mm -hmm. when it is working you check i have given an example medically before now people consume without consideration of many factors but today consumption and production is subject to many uh, technical issues for instance if you are a scientist medical doctor and you have to undergo an operation on a patient the first thing you check you check the blood pressure if it is high you suspend the same thing applies to economy once inflation is high 22.79 percent is high and you want to stabilize prices then you have to look at factors that will help you to stabilize prices mm. so that you can hit remember the entire theory of economics is concentrated on hit and run hit and run right. not in <laughs> all right uh, doctor uh, the inflation rate keeps going up and what pushes it is the price of food items today we saw that uh, the bakers have increased the price of uh, loaves of bread because they can no longer produce under what is available so, uh, also a lot of food items the prices have gone up and all of that so how do we handle that because between how do we handle it in such a way that nigerians can get relief and quickly too there is a massive disconnect between Nigeria and the world. This is very sad. You see, you've spoken about the prices of food pushing the inflation rate. Uh, I checked data of uh, global data of uh, 2020, 2021, 2022 of 100 most exported items globally there are only three food items globally that is indicating to you that a portion of the world is hungry but the global community is not hungry otherwise why would you why would we export 100 items and there are only three food items and even in the three food items there are in fact the first food item that has come at about number 43 or 44. It's a supplement, not even a main food. Soya beans. So that is telling you that the world is not hungry. Our problem is we have disconnected ourselves from the world. We look at, we say diversification today. We say we are diversifying from oil. Oil to other sectors other like agriculture. Sectors. And then we have focused massively on say agriculture. But our agricultural program seems to be failing. They are failed. The recent rice program is a failed program. Mm. Since uh, the Even former, with the rice pyramid that we the, saw. Yes, yeah. it's a failed program. <laughs> it is a failed program. Okay, the former administration launched that, uh, those kind of things, refund, uh, NISAL, uh, ANCO program, and so on and so forth. And then now they closed the border. They say, okay, produce within. Over time, over this period, we are supposed to have now massively produced and we, we, we are supposed to have been independent of rice. 
But when this administration came in, it found out that we are not independent in rice. In fact, we are hungry. Food, the, the, the prices of food has, have gone up. What do we do? As uh, 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 Dr. has said, instead of sitting down to look at the, the, the parameters, you now just said, okay, open the borders again because we don't have enough food. We have to import again. These are the kind of distortions. So the issue is, it, our problem... The borders have not been reopened the, the, the again. The problem is not even agriculture. You see, let me, let, let, let me give you the principles that drive this world. In principle, there are three things. Number one, education. Number two, trade. Number three, competition. If you can sustain or premise your programs on these three things, you are wholly an independent nation. Mm. Economically, there are certain things. You see, all these palliatives, we've been working on palliatives for centuries. Why should, why should we be working on palliatives? Go to the main thing. Um, I've spoken about education, power, and energy. I'm talking now about Nigeria. Mm. The other principles I spoke about globally, right? Education, trade, competition. That's a global thing. Now, locally, education, power, and energy, and then now iron and steel. These three things, if we can focus and invest in these three sectors of our economy, I think there are no deliberate programs. For instance, why can't Nigeria say, okay, we know we are saying about hunger, hunger. Okay, now, launch into the global community, science and technology, and say, okay, we are launching a space program. That is where you will have spin-offs. You see this super group? Yeah, but, but these this, uh, uh, recommendations or ideas that you are bringing forward seem to be more of things in the long term. Things that, that is can our be problem. In the long We've term. always been but, talking about palliatives, but, 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 palliatives, short term, short term, and yes, these things are not working. Yes, but now look at the World Bank, for instance, um, they have applauded the administration for the removal of the subsidy and also uh, for unifying the foreign exchange. Um, they believe that these decisions will rebuild the physical space and also restore the macro economy, uh, economic stability and all. What do you make of you know, this? If that is what the World Bank believes, is that what we believe? That is, I think this is a fundamental issue. You see, their own perspective is entirely different from our perspective. Yes, we have common space where we meet. But the entire system, maybe you have 25, 30%. This is the common ground where we meet. The other perspective, we, ha we have our peculiarities. What they believe is not actually what we believe. I have given an example. You see, these people, they export one, one of the items, highly, highly uh, exported, is what? These microchips. You see, you have them in your... Tell me one single factory in Nigeria where we now we are engaged in the modern technology. Say, uh, our communication gadgets. Well, it has to be a deliberate program. So, the World Bank, as far as I'm concerned, the parameters they will use to judge us is the parameters that will give those international donors, international creditors, blah, blah, all of them, what will give them profit? Mm. That's, what, that's the, 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 the point. That is their perspective. And that should not be our perspective. Okay. All right. Talking about uh, the parameters of the World Bank, Doctor, not being our parameters. In fact, a lot of persons have said that Nigeria's, uh, when the CBN kept on increasing the interest rate, it was a copy and paste uh, idea because that was what was being done in the United Kingdom and the United States of America. And so that's what we're doing here. Now, the MPC is meeting. 
at the end of today, they are going to tell us, come up with policy and all of that. And this is the first MPC meeting since this government came in. What do you think they should be looking towards? What kind of a, a policy or whatever do you think that they should come up with at this point? The first thing is to halt the NPR. I'm not expecting them to increase anything. Uh, based on the way the economy is functioning. There is low demand, there is high inflation, there is high unemployment. So whatever parameters they are trying to check in terms of productivity, raising the NPR is going to be counterproductive because when you raise the NPR, even the existence loan, and that's why you are just seated as an, as an, as an investor, you now see that your, your loan has been reviewed upward. And what does that mean? You have to create additional way of getting more money to, to fund the, 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 the services. So, halting it is the first thing. Second thing is to look at the monetary challenges. Monetary challenges, the MPC, by law, they are just to look at the liquidity, they are just to look at the inflation, and they have to make sure that price is stable. What is going to make price stable? Well, they should consider the unification in the short run. I am not expect quite uh, quite uh, quite uh, okay for me. There is need for unification, but you cannot unify an exchange rate when you importers are importing PMS that the price at the global market is not stable. Or it's Russia is holding part of the part of the growth in in oil production. Saudi Arabia is holding part, and we are expecting price to change. Price changing increasing. And when it is increasing and we are importing, definitely there will be more inflation coming. There is going to be more challenges in our domestic economy. So I am thinking the MPC should look at possibilities of creating an importer's window for, exp for and, and also a, a deliberate policy how they can access and have this. But the best way, like Dr. mentioned, we don't need palliatives. The economy is in not, in, in, not in search of palliatives. What the economy is only looking is ref refineries working. And that would be a long term. Uh, it's not long term. It's not long term. It's, it can never be. If you have the current situation. If you have the current situation. No, but doctor, no, no, if you no, have the current situation, no, though. No, the current situation is if you see it's an option. If you cannot educate your child in Ghana, educate him in Xaria. Do you understand? Now, but each each one, each alternative you take, it has a, it has a cost, and that cost has to be well checked from the income. Nigeria now is not a stable economy. A lot of push factors and pull factors. So, in a situation where you are, you are trying to save more lives in an economy that Bureau of Statistics stated that over 133 market 133 million have already joined the poverty club mm. and, and the world bank is warning that uh, another seven million could are, join. are joining so you we have to create a scenario where we maintain the price stability and maintaining you you it, you have to do it at all cost because if you refuse investment is going down i have seen from your report this money and i have said it even before today that many people will be losing job go to filling station the forces of demand and supply that is being carved as a reason why. No, there are quite an issue. If, if forces of demand and supply can work in PMS pricing, the price is supposed to be going down because there is low demand in general term. The entire filling station, there is low demand and the price is going up. Then something is wrong. Mm. Uh, you know, Doctor, the government has argued that for them to be able to free uh, show up resources, uh, to focus on other sectors of the economy uh, is one of the reasons why the subsidy has to go. So they said that the removal of the subsidy will save trillions. You know, by the end of uh, uh, a year, they are thinking about four trillion or thereabout. Now, if that's the case, then do you think that the government is in a kind of a dilemma here? Well, uh, the dilemma is in, in, in its own definition, the government's definition of why they are removing the fuel subsidy. You, you see, as you mentioned, there, there, there are reasons for removing the fuel, fuel subsidy. That particular one single reason is only one amongst many. And it's not even the fundamental reason. If you say you are removing the fuel subsidy in order to show up your capital. Eh? But the main thing is the subsidy itself 
the implementation of the subsidy, the principle of the subsidy and then the implementation were even wrong. That should be the reason why you should remove it, not even to show up your capital. Number one, you are subsidizing the wrong sector. You are subsidizing consumption. Why would you subsidize consumption? Subsidize production. Now, the forces of demand and supply is all about this inflation, blah, blah, the whole thing about economics. Okay, if you think there's a lot of inflation, why? Because people are not producing. People are only consuming. So, show up, go into production. Simple. But, but, but Dr. As a layman here, I'm not a, an economist. Since the removal of the subsidy, the cost of everything has gone up. And what I that got is, from this, is what, what, I've taken, what I've taken from this is that the, the, the fuel subsidy was at the base of everything that we're doing as a country. It, and that means that the cost of production right now it has gone up. In fact, so pro should production, that be producing produ what? production itself has been impacted Produ in yes. the sense what? that you yes. find people not <laughs> working. Producing yet. what? Producing the wrong goods for the economy. That's a problem. I've spoken about modern uh, 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 market. I've spoken about trade. This is one of the principles you go. What do you buy and what do you sell? You, you are producing something that you cannot sell. So whatever, continue producing. You are wasting your time. That's the principal thing. That's the distortion doctor yeah. has spoken about. Mm. Hmm? Your principles, you have lumped up your principles in the wrong sector. So your production, if you like, produce the whole world. So long as it is a wrong product, you are wasting your time, wasting your resources. And that is exactly what is happening now. We, all, of all the hundred items I have said, with, Nigeria is only found in crude oil. Otherwise, any other thing, Nigeria is not found there. And I've given you an example. We say we are diversifying to food. Food came number 43. And it's even a supplement food, soybeans. All the other things, the technology, blah, blah. We are not even there. In fact, even plasma blood pl placelets, today, they are being manufactured. Nigeria is not there. There has to be this deliberate you, energy. We have uh, 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 transition from the fossil fuel energy to clean energy and from uh, the clean energy even not producing the energy for immediate consumption you produce and you store batteries they are very important in technology today yes. we have uh, 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 things like cobalt cobalt batteries we have lithium batteries we have uh, 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 nickel batteries. These three types of batteries are what competing globally. So, in summary, it, Doctor, you're saying that the uh, the major factor driving our inflation is low production. Low production. Low production. Definitely, that is okay. fundamental. On the physical side, what do we need to be focusing on? You see, as you have said, the uh, 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 you said the uh, monetary authorities are meeting now they want to unroll certain policies the the the, the budget itself the, the government inherited a particular budget and it has not said okay we are reviewing the budget or we are sending for uh, this thing to the national assembly supplementary supplementary budgets they have done that isn't it the, the, the 800 well, one, well, well, that, billion. Is, that is that is right. just one single item to cut up for the a particular problem we are in today that is it but they are not sat down holistically to say okay this is what we are going to this is our own focus different from the focus of the government we have inherited from so this is our physical policies that we have to now refine but you cannot work with your physical with with the all physical policies while you have changed the monetary policy and say you are you are going to synchronize them Mm -hmm. it, it, it is not going to work. What will work is if you are changing your monetary policies from what you inherited, then you should also change your fiscal policies, policies mm -hmm. to go in tandem. If you don't do that, I think there's going to, in fact, that's the clash we are seeing. That's what causes distortion. So, what I'm saying is that if definitely they have already reviewed the monetary policies, the, 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 the fiscal policies too would have to go in the same direction. That's what I expect from the government. Mm. All right. So at the moment, 
uh, doctor has talked about production and I and I see where he's going with this which is a good thing for the country but before we go into production in the immediate uh, Nigerians are calling for palliatives would you say that it's a wrong call Nigerians do not ask for these palliatives at this point yeah it is very wrong you cannot ask for palliative for a certain group of people. I have said at times that you know, by look, you have to look at the capacity of the economy, the size of the economy, the nature of the economy, and the input you are putting in the economy. Supply bottlenecks, challenges, productions. The entire Greek zones is not is, is not is not in force. They are not they, they they are evacuated. Most of them are in IDP camps. What are you doing about that challenge? And after challenge, flooding is coming. It's taking away the size of the of the farmlands and the cost of input is going high and what are you doing with the cost of input and inflation is taking away the surpluses in the hand of for, for consumers let me give you what i said unconventional cashless decision today we are all affected nobody has cash the, if you, you if you you have to borrow ten thousand i have to borrow one thousand we take the same money to the filling stations and it now goes back to the banking sector. At the end of the day, no currency in circulation. And how do you influence productivity? So player bottleneck goes beyond uh, 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 what is important to check inflation, but to even help government to stabilize the democracy. And the supply bottleneck is an unconventional uh, 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 situation. Therefore, you need an unconventional decision to check them. Palliatives, you are asking for palliatives. Let me give you an instance. If you are to share 8,000 Naira to, to 8,000 Naira by 500 billion, you end up just giving less than 12 million. And you have over 30 million. Let me give you a precise domestic example of household management. If I have 13 children and I can only afford to educate one because my income is limited, then the rest of the 12 has become an obstacle for the survival of that single one and that is the situation on ground but uh, the, now we have a situation where the tuc has given the federal government a two-week ultimatum to come up with uh, palliatives you see the, the tst the tuc agitation the nlc and this are trade union nego uh, 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 negotiation they are always on table but government has to come up with the right decision you, can, you cannot just be talking of palliative. If you are talking, you are, if you are a lazy producer. Once you are talking, give me palliative. For what? Do you understand? But you pay. All this palliative has to be attached to production. Okay, but maybe maybe the, the right word to use is not palliative in this instance. Maybe we should talk about something to just cushion the effect of the current See, high inflation tech, uh, high tech, and so high whether whether it's uh, government some kind of intervention Doctor in the transport want a uh, in, in, in the we are, sector we have or been whatever on this for a very longer period of time yeah. i am part of those that have started this i have spoken with adam or some sometimes back in 2000 era when we blocked the national assembly in the same name and there was no other solution to it. And the only single solution is to be productive. Let our refinery work. If the refineries cannot work, then let us change the technology of what we are using. So do you think that do you think that perhaps we should reverse the removal of the subsidy and get some of these things no, 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 in no, place no. first you, before you see, we proceed? Subsidy is counterproductive. It depends on what you are subsidizing. The Chinese economy is with the biggest economy with the highest subsidy, but it's not in consumption, it's in production. That's why you have Guangzhou, you have, you have uh, uh, Chinese uh, production, special economic zones. You, there are policies on ground where you have special economic zones. Is there any investment there? Is there any courage for investors to come? Mm. And what is the economic atmosphere or the economic environment? Is it safe for everybody? Okay, so I would like the uh, doctor to speak to this. Okay, let's imagine that the government uh, suspends any form of palliative and says, okay, I'm going to go into production, I'm going to go into refinery, fixing the refinery. How, how do you think Nigerians are going to be able to manage the current situation until when these refineries begin to work, until when whatever we're producing begin to come out? You know, it's, it's going to take some time. We were uh, conventional, or let me say, modern technology is not conventional technology. You see, it has challenged a lot of even uh, scientific theories or, or scientific beliefs in the past. Today, we don't we don't need even those massive refineries standing. We have modular refineries. 
you you can build modular refineries in a space of a little time and then start you can produce or you can refine uh, for a particular region within a very short time so i think if the government is really ready to attend to this issue of uh, refining the uh, fuel we were told that Dangote will roll out his fuel at the end of July. That was what we were told about two months ago. Now I've started reading that no, it is not true. It has to be sometimes later, so on and so forth. So you see, this this kind of policy somersault is a very big problem. What Nigerians should expect, actually, is that as you have said, okay, let us not say palliative, palliative, palliative. Maybe the 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 the, the naming is wrong. Well, uh, you can call it intervention or you can call it by whatever name. Nigerians should know that we have to produce. If we are going to receive something from government to help us cushion the effect of whatever is happening, we are receiving it for the purpose of doing what? Getting stronger to produce. Yeah, but, not, not, but, not, but doctor, not, you know, we, we talk about production and... We forget that people have to transport to produce to 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 engage there for the economy to be active people must be able to move from point a to point b isn't it but that in itself at the moment appears to be in trans danger. Tra tra transportation has been heavily deregularized by technology why do in fact the last time i i, I spoke uh, about this issue of uh, fossil fuel here mm. i said if i were dangote i will not invest massively in this today transportation there's a transition in energy we, you 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 don't need fossil fuel actually i in by 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 2032 hmm, there will be no fossil fuel vehicle in france and in, in fact in the whole of europe by 2035 there will be no fossil fuel vehicle there. That's a transition they have made for themselves, and then we will still be producing fossil fuel. But it doesn't mean that. Pay, it but doesn't mean that know, crude is still, is is, uh, is, is uh, yes, irrelevant because yes, there are other products. Yes, it, it is the competition between fossil fuel and renewable energy that we have to focus on. We you know, Doctor, I'd like, I'd like you to speak more on what Aiba said earlier. Mm -hmm. At the moment, as at Thursday, Wednesday last week, mm -hmm. the streets of Abuja were empty, mm -hmm. which meant that people were in their homes. They mm -hmm. couldn't go out because of the cost of fuel at mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. Now, how do this kind of people engage in production? I, I experienced that too, actually. That was last week, yes. Has, has, has the fuel uh, price changed? No, it hasn't. It hasn't, and it the streets are still but the empty. Streets, but the streets are full. Not no, really. They are, I, I, they are. I, I, I disagree. There is, there, is, <laughs> there is massive change. They are coming up. Well, that, is, that is it. Where, where, you see, there was, there was no, a but, kind of, uh, there was a uh, kind doctor, of panic. Doctor, doctor, from the reports that we are getting from our reporters across the country, mm -hmm. that we have you know, had several reports where we learn that commercial uh, motorcyclists uh, taxi drivers are abandoning them. I agree. In fact, I, yesterday I we had agree. the secretary of the NURTW here telling us how you know many of their drivers are kind of you know redundant in the I parks. agree. I agree. Quite all right. The, the, those things exist. But what I'm saying is, we have been doing that same thing for ages, mm. and it has not changed anything. When US was normalizing their relation with Cuba. Uh, after 50 years, uh, some Americans were asking, ah, why this communist country, blah, blah. Then the government said, look, we've been doing one thing for 50 years and it has not changed anything. Why can't we change the strategy? We've been palliating, palliating for, for, for how many years? And it has not changed anything. W this uh, uh, poverty alleviation, poverty eradication, blah, we have had programs since, I can remember since 1970s when I was a kid, uh, these uh, uh, austerity measures, mm. Shagari's austerity measures, it was uh, Babangida who came to change the scenario a bit. No, but what we are saying things. is that, but Prof, what? not necessarily cash transfer. It does not uh, matter. We, 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 are, we are talking about just anything that the government can do what? aside 
you know, I mean, Nigerians themselves the anything, have kicked against the, the sharing of cash. About, the, the anything you are talking about, for instance, you say you are going to, uh, the government said it is going to unchain its uh, food reserves, uh, so, uh, give uh, food to people. Okay, now who produce? Which a lot of people are que have questioned because uh, a lot of experts have said that Niger uh, the I, government does not even have that kind of grains. That well, it I, has I don't know if the shit. government has that <laughs> grains. I say the, the method they are going to use, people, people don't trust their state governments. People seem to trust the federal government more than their respective state governments. But the federal government said they are going to use the state government. So people have lost confidence in that. That I know. I don't know whether the government has this uh, have this uh, uh, kind of uh, grants or not. That I don't know. But what we have to know is, the, who produce those grants? You see, what we have to now do to empower the local farmers. Hmm? We know we said pro production is, is is difficult in this kind of conditions. The government said. We are going to supply fertilizer. Inputs. Let me put it like this: inputs. That is also a problem. Why did the rice program? Why did why why did the Nisal uh, Ancot program fail? All all the program, not even not only rice, wheat program, all these programs, they are failures because the farmer himself is a problem. You see, I have experienced it in deploying these programs. You, 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 you send these inputs. Now, the very farmers that will collect it, a farmer will go in, sign, collect inputs worth about 430,000. Eh? He has somebody outside waiting for him. He comes out, he sells it for 70,000 sell everything for 70,000. Are those uh, actually farmers? Because uh, that is, that it, it appears that good. we have people who are, you know, good. parading as farmers and then they are actually good, not. Good, good. Those farmers who have not benefited the, using the supposed farmers, why have you sat down? Re, let, let's talk about rice. Refund. Why have you sat down to look at your program crumble? It's your own fault. You are, an, you are an organization and the government said we are doing this for you and you are the drivers of the system and then you now register fake people you yourselves you register fake mm. people there or if you are not the one registering fake people those who register fake people you sit down and look at them they bring out the, uh, uh, the so-called freebies it distributed do you think that themselves. do you think that some and of you are helpless do you think that some of these programs by government have probably been hijacked by political uh, yes, yes. loyalists and yes interests? yes yes absolutely so all right and that is the bane of uh, our issues all right doctor because um, they have left it in the the, the the politicians you see those farmers you say the politicians would come and then say, okay, I'm giving you 10,000 naira, do A, B, C, D for me. And you know that is detrimental to the whole system. As long as you will get what you will eat today, you don't care about what happens tomorrow. All right, that's so, the, pro that's all the right, biggest so problem. My question is to doctor. Yeah. Well, doctor has talked about the, f the farmers and all of that. So it's obvious that there is a need to clean up the system going forward. Now, is it possible, though, for the government to provide not palliative, I won't use the word again, yeah. to provide something to cushion <laughs> the situation at the moment, while at the same time working towards enhancing production and all of that. Simple. What the government can do is just to stabilize the price in the economy that is halting the inflation. Then what, by halting it... you Starting from petrol. I'm, I'm just going. The only thing the government is supposed to do is that it is the policy of government to unify the exchange rate. Exclude PMS out of it to provide a window, no matter what, and be efficient there. The problem of the central bank is that they, 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 they did not maintain efficiency in maintaining the windows. There must be a window at which it can affect everybody because now it is well understood that high, any hike in PMS price affects everyone in the economy. Mm -hmm. So anything that can sustain over a period of time, pending when production will come into the economy. Create the window. 
Let the exporters follow through the window, get this product efficiently into the economy so that we can be buying it probably at the former price of 500, which is, which is more accommodative. And then government will have time at which they will look into the production line, not only looking at the product, and forget about the palliatives because if you are giving palliatives, because of palliatives, that's why I don't want it. Because I know you cannot cover, you cannot cover over 180 million Nigerians with palliatives. Mm. And if you are to cover them, the cost is greater than the cost of the subsidy itself. Are you sure about so, that? So, yes, so, is there, yes. so, is, uh, yes. so, are you saying, uh, Ishao, 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 are you saying that, are you saying, I have calculated it, uh, Ishao, I don't want I, to mention are you, say, yes. are you saying that there is no intervention whatsoever that can be done by government that will have at least a maximum effect, maximum effect on the population <laughs> aside Go to you know, Kubo, sharing of You money. will see abandoned palliative buses in hundreds. They are still lying fallow. Mm -hmm. These are the palliatives that we have experienced. And now the, we have seen also the governors are going back to drawing board. Mm -hmm. They want to develop an option. Look, the issue of saving money. If you save and you do not create avenues of turnover you are just saving nothing whatever we save from subsidy we are sharing it mm. we are sharing it and it's going into the few hands the technocrats and the politicians so in in, in a nutshell let us agree that there is a problem problem is inflation once you have an inflation rate of 22.71 or 79 at a particular period when unemployment is as high as over 33 percent of the youth mm -hmm. and once you are looking also the poverty club you are trying to make more more members mm -hmm. there is an alternative these are men in those policies mm -hmm. this window that we are speaking about in the central bank is men in those window they know how to do it you exempted pro uh, product not to be accessing including rice there is hunger I have gone through, I am among the few individuals that did not agree completely on the closure of borders mm. because Kano was built by Trans-Saharan trade. So if you can build as big as Kano with Trans-Saharan trade, Kano was barren. Well, no, the, is, the reason given at that time was that so that we could be self-sufficient to rice Self-sufficient, you but have to walk inward. How can you close border for rice and you did not close border for PMS to be sufficient in refining refining product? Mm -hmm. How can you attest to that? Once you are looking for PMS and there is no any for eight years, there is no any proactive decision to close border, close the importation, let us produce because we have a refineries mm -hmm. and we have the technology and we have the expert. And we have also friends and partners worldwide. Look, let us be more, more fashionable to our economy. Our economy is that is one of the biggest in, in in the world and the biggest in Africa. And we have the patient consumers that are ready to consume whatever that is produced within the economy. Nobody has a taste of foreign rice. Before 1970s, there was no rice in Nigeria. Our parents were only eating corn and millet and they are comfortable and with, with less diseases i don't mind to go back to that same uh, consumption pattern if it is available but at what price the cost of input these are some of the drastic measures uh, probably it is true that when you look at the coverage yes subsidy is gone then unification of exchange rate in, there are always uh, uh, immediate benefit immediate problems the immediate problem of that unification is that it has brought a hike in importation because you are not producing. Mm. If today Nigeria is producing, unify the exchange rate. There is nobody. Whoever they want to study in Russia, let him let him go to, mm. to, to the market. Yet you say that there is no need to, rev I mean, yet you say that we do not have to reverse uh, these policies at, the, at least 
stabilize the system before we do that. You gave an analogy earlier that yeah. if a surgery is to be conducted yeah. on a person, yeah. the doctor checks the blood the pressure, he checks all kinds of things to make sure that the patient is in a stable condition before proceeding with the surgery. But in our case, it doesn't look like the patient in a sta is in a stable condition and yet we are going ahead with the surgery. Is it not going to kill the patient? No, no, no. The, 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 anytime, anytime, you know, like when you say how city is growing, cities, any city you see in the world has blood vessels, that is the capillaries. The, the, the roads network that are pushing people and then take them then away. That is how city grows. That's why when you check Abuja on weekends, there is no inflow. Mm. So the city is quiet and dull because mm. there is no inflow. So the human system, I'm trying to say that uh, Dr. Elias spoke of the distortion of policy. Now, we have agreed that government is not going to pay subsidy. We quite agreed. And APC came up with 500 as it been did. We said, okay, let's welcome it. But you went see immediately you unify the exchange rate, and that was why you don't supposed to bring the unification at that period, or you can bring the unification and exempt the PMS. Are you getting the, okay? So your your solution. your grouse is having the two policies yes, at, the, at same the, same the same time. Perhaps we should run with one and then uh, exactly but the other with the condition presently. Instead, for you to take heavy funds to look for heavy funds to pay for palliatives that will not be enough. Are you getting it? Because whatever palliatives you are get, get, giving to people is not going to solve the problem. It's going to prolong the problem. But what will cease is you go back to the drawing board. Listen carefully. The, President Bola Metunubu has one certain political consideration. Together in hope. All of us. We Renew, must be in renewed hope. hope. Renewed hope. And if you are to give renewed hope, you have to give renewal of consumption hope. Mm -hmm. that if I go to if I go to police station, I will feel that I have government. I will feel that government is still with me in my problems. Mm -hmm. And that is why I advocated that there is no reason why if President Tinubu will ask the committee to go and review the eight thousand palliatives mm -hmm. to be given. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. It is also equally to quickly go to monetary policy as they are holding meeting to hold the NPR, that is first. Okay, that's, that's your own mm. uh, that's uh, also position. And the second is to make sure that there is a, a importance window for only PMS okay. to stabilize prices of the All right, Well, let's come to doctor as well. Well, the, you know, it's a, a popular statement that has now gone viral uh, on social media by the president is that let the poor breathe. But it doesn't look like the poor, <laughs> the poor people are breathing right now. They are suffocating. So how do we make sure that the poor people breathe? in this instance, within the context of what we're saying. Uh, Yishao has talked about, you know, finding a way to stabilize it, going back to the drawing board. What's your own one, submission? One, one of the factors why the poor is not breathing uh, is actually not because uh, there is no enough air for the poor to breathe. Mm. You see, he spoke, Dr. Dr. Yishao spoke about a particular thing. Let me go to the filling station and feel I have a government. Confidence. Yes. Confidence. Whatever you deploy, whatever you implement, if you like, make Nigeria's budget 50 trillion naira mm. annual budget. If the citizens have no confidence in the government, that particular budget will not work. Mm. So you have to instill confidence. What will give the citizens mm. that okay. confidence? What will give the citizen confidence? Number one, transparency. You see, when uh, uh, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu came, he met uh, something uh, from the past administration they call the National Social Register. Mm. Uh, the National Economic Council last week told us that they are not going to use it. Use it. Mm. They said right? it lacked integrity. Because, yes, it lacked integrity. Right? Okay. This is now sending a signal to the Nigerian people that this government has no confidence in this particular policy of the past administration. But the same people, the same citizens are saying that we do not want the state government. You have come up, you have demolished a particular policy of the past government and you are bringing in your own and Nigerians are saying no this is your own we don't trust it 
So what do you do? Say, okay, we want to be transparent. This is how we we'll develop our register, or not even this how this how we are developing our register, openly, transparently. This is it, and Nigerians will trust it, and then we'll say, yeah, but okay, how would that how see. how would that check inflation, doctor? Because. I mean, we are talking about see, how to stabilize this, the system. This, this is about inflation. You have to produce. Look at, we gave, we gave examples of our RISE program. When, 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 as doctor said, you do not have to close the borders entirely. Well, if you close the borders entirely, what of competition? Our principal failure in this particular RISE or WIT program is in what? Competition. Instead of closing the borders, why not reach up to those the standards of those imported rice we have local locally produced rice in the stores that when you go you see you pity yourself you don't you you, you hate the rice and then you you are, you are craving for 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 the imported rice why because it is better i mean rise up to competition if you do not stand it standardize your system hmm, whatever you do produce the 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 rice program the the uh, refund what refund told us is that we we, we require about 12 mi 12 13 mi million metric uh, tons. million tons mm. for consumption but they said they have capacity for milling only nine million metric tons and then out of that they said what is being supplied to them is only about five million metric tons of rice okay if you are being supplied five million metric tons how many are you now import, mm. in, in importing out of the compare the ones we are importing and the one you are producing if you produce if if you produce and mill five million metric tons that means you are in deficit of about seven okay. million okay doctor okay, with so, that deficit mm. how 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 would you compare your own rice with the rice we are importing. Mm. This, this is very fundamental. The government has refused to standardize systems. Mm. So that, that, that makes the government, that makes the citizen not have confidence in the government because the government is not up to its own responsibilities. Mm. All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jamil Muhammad Nahiru, an economist, and also uh, Ishao Aliu, uh, equally an economist, joining us to talk about how to tame uh, inflation in the country, even as the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, you know, announced their resolutions at the end of today, uh, arising from the uh, Monetary Policy uh, Committee meeting. Well, thank you. We look forward to having you again. Thank, you, thank you very much.